Hello everyone, welcome back to Feed the Beast Neotech episode 8. Now, I've had a bit of time between this episode and the last, and that's because I was recording an episode, however I'm not too happy with the way it actually turned out. So let's just hop into a bit of highlights from that episode that I failed to record, and jump back into this once we're ready. So the first thing we wanted to do is progress into the MV age. Now that was mainly progressing through oil because we're going to be needing a lot of ethanol for a process later down the line. Now to get ethanol, we have to do quite a bit of microprocessing when it comes to fluids. The main one being raw biodiesel. And that is gotten from putting LPG fluid in a thermonomatic processing plant with sulfur dust. And the way you get LPGs the same way as any other pneumatic craft pack, it is simply by putting crude oil in a refinery controller. Now to get crude oil, it's not simply just mining up a vein of oil found around the world. You actually have to make crude oil yourself. Virulent mix comes from the oil drilling rig with aluminum drills. So we were lucky enough to get aluminum drills from the quest reward. So we didn't actually have to make any, which got us a big head start. Now with our raw biodiesel obtained, we actually started to go and make some ethanol, which also gives us biodiesel as a byproduct. Well, sorry, the ethanol is technically the byproduct, but we're only after the ethanol. So to us, the biodiesel is the byproduct. Now with our ethanol acquired, all we want to do is combine some ethanol with sulfur dust to get ourselves some ethylene and sulfuric acid. Now these are two very important fluids and gases that we will be using to process stainless steel in the future. However, I wasn't too happy with how our setup turned out, so I went ahead and actually moved it all into a new basement room I designed, which was very simple. I used a destruction gadget and a copy-paste gadget, built a new basement room down below our factory for all of our automation needs. So I went ahead and set up large steel tanks as using mechanisms basic fluid tanks wasn't going to cut it in the long run, so we made two very large tanks and two smaller tanks for our processes. Now, as you saw, I actually built the entire system I have right here up above, and then I went ahead and tore it down and rebuilt it down here. Because, well, it first of all looked kind of ugly up there. It was conflated because I was making two extra outputs I didn't need to, as I didn't actually look at the refinery properly, and we didn't have enough storage for virulent mix and oil. So, we went ahead and made a bunch of tanks, brought it all downstairs, and we are looking good. Now, I haven't set up the biodiesel to ethanol processing back up because we're going to change it up a bit and expand on our setup and make a bunch of new machinery. And I mean a bunch of new machinery to this episode. First thing I want to do mainly is make a new ore processing plant. The one at our base is only for the original ores we got from MV. However, our steam core here now produces, what is it? 19 different ores that we have to process. Now, technically speaking, I could process this gold ore in the same thing, and I probably will actually. So it's only 18. However, this means I need 18 machine setups to process all of our new ores and stuff, and then we'll expand it later. However, I didn't have the room or the expansion capabilities before, but now what we're going to do is use medium voltage for all of our machines, which also means I'm going to be expanding to medium voltage steam turbines so we no longer have to use the transformer and so we produce a bit more energy in the go. Because the reason I'm doing this is I'm out of coal dust, like completely out. I've used it all to turn virulent mix into oil, which I have a lot of, so it's not that large of a deal. However, we've used it all and I do need these guys running as much as possible. They're also empty on heat somehow. I'm pretty sure I have this hooked up down below. Yeah, no, it's hooked up and this guy should be heated up fully. I guess the heat pipes are just not contained well. Yeah, I want these guys running at 100 at all times if possible. Maybe I have to do vortex tubes on each one of them for that to happen because yeah, this can't work. I mean, these guys can't work by not working. You know what I mean? Yeah, I might have to do that. I might have to add thermal lagging or sorry, vortexes on each one individually which isn't too big of a deal. These guys are really cheap. It's literally just compressed iron, copper, and pressure tubes. So I'll probably go ahead and do that. Nevertheless, that is a very minor detail in today's episode. What we're going to be doing is skipping what I was planning to do this episode, technically, which was all of the vacuum freezer and 
all of this, which we still might get to. However, that's not going to be my main focus. My main focus is going to be processing all of the ores and then hopefully moving into assembling setups because we need to automate the drill production because right now without drill production, we can't get infinite ore production. While the quarry does give us infinite ores, we can't process them and that is a big problem. All right, so I've gone ahead and calculated everything. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need 36 macerators because there's 18 ores or sorry, there's 17 ores, so I need 34 macerators. My bad. Because quartz is a duplicate. There is modern industrialization quartz, and then there's nether quartz. So both those can be processed the same length of gold. So there's 17 ores. Therefore, I'm going to need 34 macerators. There is seven ores that are processed through smelting. So we're going to need seven furnaces. We will need only two macerators for these guys because these guys get both input into an implosion chamber or in our case the pressure chamber from pneumatic craft however we're going to need these two in the implosion chamber double macerated still and these guys here are only going to be double macerated no further processing needed since that's going to be redstone dust coal dust salt which is a form of dust osmium which we can't process yet because this gets ebf and same with antimony this is just simply a dust because we don't need the antimony ingots ever. We want the dust for battery alloy. We want the dust for non-dope silicon plates as well. So yeah, that guy just wants to stay as the dust. Now the quartz and lapis, this is going to be double macerated and then compressed. So we'll need two compressors. And then the bauxite is a different one completely because it gets double macerated and then it gets electrolyzed. So we'll need an electrolyzer for this guy. A lot of machines. So 34 macerators, seven furnaces, two compressors, and a single electrolyzer and a pneumatic craft pressure chamber. If you want to follow along and build a setup similar to this for everything you need for the first two drills you get in the game, aka the steel and bronze drill. We're not doing stainless steel drills. We're not doing any of the other drills at the moment. For just the two original mining drills you can have early access to in the MV slash LV age, it'll be these guys right here. So once again, 34 macerators, seven furnaces, two compressors, one electrolyzer, and one pressure chamber from Pneumatocraft. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a lot of crafting. That's gonna be going back to my base and crafting a bunch of infar and macerators and furnaces and compressors, and then upgrading all of those to MV, which means making double the machine casings, and it's going to be a lot of crafting. So we're gonna buckle down, I'm gonna start crafting, and then we'll come back once we can set it all up. And with that done, I should finally be the last advanced machine haul I have to make for today. This has been a few hours, probably about like almost two and a half hours of micro crafting running back over here. As you still, I have more copper wires going. I have some copper plates still going and yeah, just running back and forth constantly doing stuff. If I had a better process for all of my wires and stuff, it would take a bit less time, but there's still so much crafting. I had to make more aluminum. I had to make so much more steel plates. I had to process more bauxite. I have diamonds still in here from processing for the macerators. It's been a long, long time. However, we are done and we can start going to set stuff up. So I do have a lot of pipes. However, they're not colored and I do want to color them for the ores, probably. I think it would just be easier. However, I don't have any more item pipes, do I? No, I don't. So let's just make a bunch more item pipes and that should be good for now. We'll see. However, the way I want to set these up is pretty standard. However, I do want the barrels because the drawers, the barrels from, what are these things called? Are they called barrels? Yeah, these guys from Modern Industrialization, A, they can only hold up to 512 stacks, which could, isn't going to be enough, and B, they have the texture glitch where you can't actually see anything because Ibedium is in the back. So what we're going to do is use the technique we used for our spruce farm over there and use limited barrels. Now these guys are both super useful because we can craft limited barrels that are color coordinated, which is kind of cool. I think we can color coordinate them. Maybe we can't color them. Maybe you have to dye them. I don't know, but these are dyed. But I'll probably just stick to spruce because that's convenient. However, for things like the coal where I have sulfur and coal, that'll be useful. But other than that, I don't think any of these have a byproduct as far as I can remember because the silver will just send over to the silver one because we have a silver ore and nothing else should have a byproduct that we don't have. So what we'll do is we'll do a limited barrel two like this and then we'll do regular limited barrels for our whatever you call it so we're gonna make a bunch of these which is pretty simple so we'll do spruce and then a redstone torch i'm going to need a lot more of these out of sticks out of spruce 
All right, that should be enough because I do want one for each ore. No, that's not going to be enough because I want... Yeah, I want to have a filler for each byproduct because it's seven high our roof. So we can do boom, boom all the way down. Yeah, I'm going to need a lot more barrels than this. All right, be right back. I'm going to get a bunch of wood. Okay, that should be enough barrels. And then we also do want one double. How do you make the double? Yeah, how do you make this size two one? There we go. It's just like this. Okay, pretty easy. I've never used these before outside of the fact that we got them for request. So A, I don't know how to craft them innately. And, well, they're pretty useful. So we're going to keep using them. However, that should be good. So let's hop down. And also... I realized elevator blocks are in this pack, so we're probably going to set up elevators around our base because jumping off 24-7 is just not the best way to go about it. It doesn't damage our boots, but still not the best way. So the way I want to set this up is pretty much everything in the wall like it was before. So we're going to do probably some space in between them just so they're not all beside each other. However, pretty simply, we'll have, for example, let's do the lead ore because that's the first one we have. So I'll have a limited barrel input, which will be lead ore. Oh, I want it facing towards me. So lead ore goes in there. Then we macerate it and then we output it and then we macerate it, output it, furnace it, and then output it. That's pretty much the game plan, right? So that'll be for lead and I'll go down and then we'll have all the ores down here. Now, I'm not sure if I want to space these out necessarily, right? Because if we space them out, it'll look kind of nicer probably. How much do I have? I have one, two. Let's just let's just see what this looks like. One. No, space and out won't work. I'll just do them all beside each other. I hate how these pack automatically. They should only pack if you're shift right clicking them. I'm sorry, that's a fact. They should only pack if you're shift breaking them, because otherwise, how are you supposed to pick them back up in bulk? It just doesn't make sense. But anyways, we'll break all this out, and then we'll set up further all processing to the side, specifically for like the pressure chamber and stuff. And there's a bunch of more processing I want to do down here, so it works in the end. And I got to figure out where I want coal. So coal is probably the last one I want, in all fairness. Just because it's the double, and double won't look nice anywhere else. Maybe in the middle. You know what? Coal is going to be... No. That's dumb. Okay, coal will be on the very end. And something like that should work. Now I'll take all of my ores. So those are good. Then I need my two compressed ones. Oh, this actually won't work. I need two... Two limited barrels up top because we're going to need gold for limited and we're also going to need... Ooh, that's going to destroy efficiency. You know what? We're not going to process them. I'm not going to use another drill anymore. I'm just not going to process the gold. We'll process it manually because I'm just thinking I'm going to have to make four more masteries and two more furnaces and six more advanced machine casings. And I don't feel like doing that just because efficiency, the way efficiency works, the reason we do it like this is because, well, we want to keep everything efficient. And it can't be efficient if it's switching between gold ore and nether ore. So yes, we're not going to process them simply because I don't want to make any more. Now, later in the line, I might process them. However, for now, no. Now, what was the other one we needed? We needed lapis and... What else gets compressed? Quartz. Did I already put it in? I did. All right, and there is our full wall done. This is taking way too long. It, it is taking absolutely way too long, and we haven't even hooked up anything yet. However, this recording seems very short because you got a highlight from the two and a half hours I spent doing this, and then we just pop over to two and a half hours of this being done. And I have like 10 minutes of footage on this video so far. But yeah, it seems like barely anything's happened. However, now it's time to hook all of these guys up to our electric quarry upstairs, get them all filtered in, which is just going to be a lot more filtering and time spent. And then I have to go build some MV machines, which I will actually do now just so I can get all of... Actually, no, they can't be powered without filtering. Okay, so we're going to filter them all and then we'll go upstairs, get some MV turbines set up. So that means I'm going to have to make more machine hauls. However, the MV steam turbines require... Yeah, you don't even use these guys. Damn, that's a shame. However, we only need eight of these. <laughs> and what I'm going to do because of this is since I need eight of those, we are going to oh, we get four machine holes for doing this. That is nice. I will say, I don't believe we get any other machine holes for quests in here. Yeah, you don't. So that's fine. However, we do get four machine holes for making one of these. So that's really nice. And then, yeah, we're going to upgrade our bronze boiler to large or sorry, the advanced one, because that is a quest over here in LV and me, and we should just do it anyways. So we'll upgrade to advanced large steam boiler, make our multi-block slightly taller, 
and then move on with that as well so that we can have enough steam backlogged for these LV turbines to actually run. Just in between the floors here, I've gone ahead and dug down just a few stairs here and opened up the back of all of these machines. However, now we can play the game of sort and organizing. Alright, so these guys are set to whitelist and mode extract. There is one small thing I want to do with these guys. Motors, we're going to use a large motor, will be able to speed up the pipe speed. So we'll do eight items every three seconds or extra eight items every three seconds. So we're going ahead and crafting up a large steam boiler. I've already placed the boiler itself down there. However, I do need to replace the middle block and then add nine more plated bricks up top. So we're just making some more fire clay bricks in the furnace at the moment. Also hooked up all of this down here for the piping, which I can't show from there, but I will go through here. So I've hooked it all up with the sorting, pretty simple, and I've used up all of my gold. And I mean literally all of it. I'm pretty sure I have like 30 ingots left to upgrade all of these to gold barrels, as well as do stack upgrades in all of them. And then down here, it's three stack upgrades. So yeah, we don't have any gold left. However, what I'm using are hopper upgrades, which are pretty easy to craft. It's just a hopper, iron plates, and some redstone with the upgrade base. And these guys allow automatic output, so I don't have to worry about piping each one individually in. It would just take a lot more work. However, that means these will automatically push into this, and these will automatically push into this, and then push into this. So it's a nice automatic system in that sense. But for now, that is the system we have going on. This also being taller should cushion my fall more often. So we'll do something like that, and then we'll set this to 1. Perfect. Now, I wonder if this water will keep up. Let's see. Well, that's not my input hatch. This is. I want to wait for it to get to full temperature, and then we'll see if the water input can keep up, or we'll have to make another water tank, maybe. And then, obviously, we'll make more than one boiler in the future. Like, I'll probably do double-facing boiler like this, and then use the same frequency hatch. Okay, let's see. The water seems to be keeping up pretty nicely. That's a good sign. And how much charcoal do we have? 4,096. Perfect. Yeah, and these guys are all backlogged full of charcoal. So, should be good. Hopefully, this all works out. Now it's time to make some steam turbines. Nevertheless, the last thing I have here is to make more electrum wires. And I should be done after this. I think that's enough. I have my MV storage units, my turbines, and everything else good to go. So, let's go ahead and disconnect all of these. Oh, I didn't want to disconnect the steam pipes. Not ideal. And I will disconnect the wires. Go back to the grid go. Steam turbines. Wait, are these the LV ones? Those are the LV ones. Damn it. Perfect. Now, can this keep up with four? I mean, it went up just now. It seems to be keeping up with four. Okay, good sign. Well, that's actually three. Can it keep up with four? 20. Okay, it's keeping up with four. Let's try five. <laughs> or sorry, six. Oh, whoops. I'm breaking the thing. That's what I want to do. Okay, can you keep up with five? We'll try one at a time. Five. Okay, it's solid at 3872 going up to 400. That was just the buffer. Okay, not bad. Mind you, these are just buffering, right? Okay, we're actually going to have to hook them up to our power system. Because it's not so much the fact that this can't keep up. It's the fact that if our system can't keep up with it. And that is the big concern at the moment, actually. Now that I think about it. This isn't going to test anything. Well, this won't give any uh, results, is what I mean to say. So I need a LV to MV converter right here. So MV to LV transformer, and we'll do the output on the top like this, and then I can run it upwards. Do I have my pattern thing on me? I do not. Well, I'm going to have to go get that. Was I never bringing power over from the other turbines? No, I definitely was. Through the floor. Okay, never mind. I was concerned for a second. I forgot. I I need two LV converters. Yeah, I need a second MV to LV converter for this side. Okay, never mind. Crisis averted. What's also funny about this is I'm going to go LV to MV upstairs. So I'm going to be converting... MV to LV back to MV, but for now it's what it is. I'll fix it in the future. Not a big deal. However, I do need another converter for that side now that I realized. Also, I kind of want to connect these. I'm definitely going to connect them, sorry, because I can't run the entire system downstairs off of two single ones. So what we're going to do is do that. Oh, these are LV storage units. I want to retain the power in these. Do they retain? They do not. Well, we're going to lose a bunch of forge energy for no reason. Oh, we'll do MV storage units, like so. I'll fix the floor in a second, and then we need one more for this side. I already know this system's... I, I, I just feel it. That is not going to keep up. But we're going to hope. Because hope is all we have. <laughs> I wish you could downgrade the overclocking. Because this is going to be so efficient that it's going to use up so much power. But yeah, it seems to be keeping up pretty good. I'm going to collect all these blocks. 
cover up the pipes, and we should be good to finally move on from ore processing and hopefully be good. But yeah, these guys seem to all be full of power still. Somehow. I don't know how exactly. And our steam turbine's keeping up, kind of? Yeah, it's kind of keeping up. Not bad. We might need another one in the future, but there's a decent enough backlog in this steam tur uh, chest that's pretty fine for now. And that's the last cover up. Now our base is back to normal. We're upgraded fully to MV. Obviously, we do have MV to LV downgrades in the walls just so that they can work. However, down here, we should see. Look at that. Oh, there's an error here. What's going on here? How did uranium dust get in there? Oh, uranium dust is an output of lead, apparently. Oh, it definitely is. Interesting. We know what's going on here. How's raw silver? Oh, we need to lock it. Right. So this needs to be locked. Lock, 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 lock. Can I lock it and then put the emerald in? Okay, yes, I can. Perfect. Lock, put diamond, and then lock, 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 lock. Nice. We have a full wall of working machinery. Now, there is one small thing I want to do, and that is be able to access this from anywhere in the system. Now, since all of our machines are running in synchronization, we are obviously draining a lot of power. So there's a few machines down here that just can't quite keep up. As you see, once they've been fully overclocked, they just don't keep up with the speed anymore, which was assumed. However, I believe it's mainly an Electrum cable issue rather than a power issue, but I'm just going to come up here and double check because these guys should still be full. Yeah, the MV storage units are full. So it's definitely a Electrum issue. So if we go MV wires, what's the other M or no, it's cable. I guess I can't search up by tier and that is annoying. Right. So the highest MV cable we have is unfortunately only 1024 EUs per tick. That is very unfortunate because yeah, we can't make anything better. Wow. That is... A pretty bad mod design in my opinion because how are you supposed to make giant things like this without being able to extract power right am i expected to have 20 storage buses and each one exports to a single one so like i have storage unit it powers these three storage unit sorry storage unit powers these nine storage unit powers these nine storage unit powers these nine and so on i think that's bad game design i should be able to export it from my storage banks i have four of them considering and yeah these electron cables just simply can't keep up a 1024 eu per tick they can't keep up with all of these machines However, the only thing I have to do now is connect coal dust over to this barrel over here, which I don't actually have a barrel. So I'm just going to connect them underground because the barrel, which is right here, the steel barrel, it, the bug with the visual glitch is just so annoying. I didn't want it in my base anymore. Now there's only a few things left here that we have to do with our machine wall. And then I'm going to hook it up to our ME storage system, probably just the bottom row. I don't need to worry so much about the dusts and stuff. Now, some of these dusts I'm going to have to craft manually or set up ME crafting for later down the line. However, for now, I'm just going to set up the bottom ones and that will be using storage links. I'm not entirely sure how these works, but it says connect separate multi-block of storages to controller. Use storage tool to link to controller. So if I click, if I make one of these, the electric packer, which is a circuit reinforced slab and an upgrade base, I should be able to stick it on the back of one of these drawers and then stick another one up there and they should connect. We will see. I might need another controller to connect them, but I'm going to try that. And then if that works, we can have access to all of our ingots without having to run ME cables all throughout the base and then do more storage controllers and storage buses. So I'm going to craft one of these up real quick. Luckily, I have an under pearl and then reinforce slab and upgrade base. Don't have an upgrade base. And then if we take the electric packer, this guy, this should work. I might need to make two of these actually. Yes, that only makes one. I'm not sure what I was thinking. That's why it gives you two. Obviously, I've just been playing so long today that I've forgotten my left or my right. So yes, next episode, I definitely want to get into modern industrialization, further processing with the vacuum freezer, and then complete the MV age. Now, obviously, I wanted to complete this this episode. It just didn't come to pass. I do get four advanced machine hulls for this that I completely forgot about, and I, I told myself about it too, and I went ahead and crafted more machine hulls than I needed. However, this will come in handy, obviously, for all of the MV machines we're going to have to craft for this processing, which is... I think 10 or 12 more machines total along with the vacuum freezer so there's a lot more to do so if i'm linking to that controller right now i wonder how far away this can go hopefully it's pretty far because if not this is going to be very annoying i don't think it's close enough or maybe that just doesn't work and i need a storage controller on the back i'll go make another storage controller all right i'll place another storage controller down and then i'll right click this guy on turn off my magnet yeah no it definitely doesn't okay 
So the problem is, is I'm probably going to have to do ME cables down to the base, which isn't too big of a deal. However, that doesn't mean I'm getting another storage bus, but I do believe the quest gave you two of them after you made the ME controller. I'm going to check my ME system. I'm pretty sure I have two extra ones. Storage bus. Yes, I got two extra ones from the ME controller quest. I will just run these ME cables I made and make a bunch more of them, apparently. All right, so I've gone ahead and set up everything upstairs. Our system is online. ME cables are all hooked up. And this guy is fully online now. So it's it looks really good, I will be honest. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And this is fully accessible. We have all of our dusts, all of our ores and everything. So we can, if need be, can just grab some lead dust out of here, like before it processes and say, hey, I need lead dust before it gets processed. But most of this will get processed before we can access it. However, everything is here and it looks great and it's updating and all of our ores will be processed once we get automatic drills online for the quarries themselves. But guys, I'm going to wrap up the episode there. That was a very, very long day for me. Everything took a very, very long time. Obviously, now that I have all of this set up, it will be a lot quicker to do projects. However, I still need to switch over our steam machines to MV machines with our plates and wires and all that. Those will need to be switched over and then switch all of these guys over to MV as well at some point for our manual machinery. And then back there, we're going to actually have to set up all the process for the next episode when it comes to processing for stainless steel and that will be a big process in itself so i'm holding that off to the next episode i hope you guys enjoyed whatever this episode turned out to be this has been about four and a half hours of recording and seven hours of work so i do hope you guys enjoyed i'll s hope the video was entertaining and if you guys did enjoy it, leave a like on the video if you don't want to miss any of the future videos hit that subscribe button and if there's something you learned today or if you want to tell me that I'm doing something wrong. Please leave in the comments below. I read them all and I do enjoy them. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye.